For the start of recording this video, I pre-wrote down some formulas that we're going to use, but I did intentionally write them using some other letters than are usually used. Normally, this top formula here ends up saying the nth root of a equals a to the 1 over nth power, but I instead wrote the pth root of c is equal to c to the 1 over pth power. Um, earlier, we had seen a b quantity to the nth is equal to a to the n times b to the n. I now wrote s's in place, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this true formula, this true formula, or this true formula earlier in the class, I'd like to replace all s's over n's. I'm going to replace all of r over n. And so that's all my first step is going to be for each of the three formulas. Um, each of these three true formulas, true because we discovered they were true earlier in the semester, um, I'm going to now build a new true formula out of these. So the first step is to make the replacements. Every S, I'm going to write 1 over N instead. So AB raised to the 1 over N. And then on the right side, instead of A to the S, I have A to the 1 over N. Instead of B to the S, I have B to the 1 over N. Same deal. We'll just, uh, instead of doing one formula at a time, let's do the same step in the next one. So A over B to the, uh, instead of to the S power, I'll write to the 1 over N. And then here, um, notice the shape of this is a fraction where each, the numerator and denominator are, are exponential expressions. So a to the s is a to the n denominator. The b to the s and the denominator is a b to the denominator. Big deal here. So instead of a to the r in parentheses, I have a to the 1 for m. I'm using this finally. Outside the parentheses, there was this s. So I should write a n power to the outside. And on the right side, I have a to the r times s. So I have a to the 1 over m for the r times 1 over n for the s. So this first formula, what I can now do is use this uh, pth root of c is equal to c to the 1 over p. Notice that my c is actually a b, that whole thing, a times b. And the, um, the 1 over p, that's like the 1 over n. So that means p is n, right? Notice the 1 over is the one over. The one over here is the one over here. So the p is the n. And so um, I can take the left side and rewrite this as the nth root of a on the right side. <coughs> excuse me. Um, one, sorry, a to the one over n. That looks like this. I can rewrite that as nth root of a. Same deal. I have b to the one over n. So that looks like c to the one over p. And I can write that as nth root. In the next formula, on the left side, I have a over b, that quantity to the 1 over n. So now, that again looks like this right here. But what I do is I notice that the c is, well, it's more complicated. c is a over b, that fraction. And um, so the, to the power 1 over p, that's to the power 1 over n. That means the n is the p. So I convert that to look more like this, and I have n root of the fraction over p. On the right side, I have a fraction, and the numerator says a to the 1 over n. So I'm going to use this formula again and have nth root of a. The denominator says b to the 1 over n, so I'll write that as n root of b. For the last formula, um, <clears throat> let me take care of, uh, so what's in parentheses, I'll call this, <clears throat> this thing, this a to the 1 over nth power. I'm going to call that my c. And so this is all raised to the 1 over n. That will be like my 1 over p way up here. And so I'll have the nth root of c, which is a. The right side, I might as well simplify using my fraction rules. So a to the, <clears throat> instead of writing 1 over m times 1 over n, multiply across for fractions and have 1 over mn as the exponent. Still a little more work to do here. So nth root of... Um, and now notice, it's, I've already written the nth root. Now inside the root symbol, it says e to the 1 over m, and I can use this formula, uh, plug in m for the p, and I'll have m root of a, because I'm plugging in a for the c. On the right side, I actually have, uh, so this a to the power 1 over mn does look like this. I just have to be careful with what my c and my p happen to be. So the c is a. The p is now actually m times n. So if I use the formula, I'll get um, the mn root of a. So these three formulas right here are the three fundamental formulas or roots. And they were really built out of this idea from earlier and then these three formulas from earlier. If you plug in n is 2 for uh, 
for all of these routes, and I guess for the for the M as well, um, it's most important for these. So if you plug in N is two, then you have the second root of two equals the second root of A times the second root of B. And usually we don't write the second root, so you could just write root A B equals root A times root. B. Same deal here. If you plug in uh, N is equal to two, you end up getting root A B. That is the square root is equal to square root of a over square root of b. So you could think of this as a separate formula from this one right there. Um, it's probably not a really good idea to think of them separate and to think that you've got to memorize them separately. This general formula, um, this square root version is used so often. This is the general formula for nth roots of a fraction, um, but this the square root version is used very often. And remember, and remember, this is just a special case of this general formula. Right? This last one, um, not really often used for. Uh, I won't really mention the special case of what happens when you plug in m and n is two. All right.